Hello and welcome to the next screencast exploring the Networked Media Open Specifications project from AMWA. I'm Alex Rawcliffe. And I'm Andrew Bonney. NMOS is developed in line with the Joint Task Force for Network Media Reference Architecture from the EBU, SMPTE and Video Services Forum. It's been tested by members of the AMWA Networked Media Incubator project as part of their Phase 1 workshop in January 2016. And all of the work that we're talking about in these screencasts is currently a work in progress. In this screencast, we're going to talk about in-stream identity and timing, understanding how each grain carries its identity and can do so via RCP. And we're going to talk about end-to-end -end timing and synchronisation. There are a number of important points to cover in these areas as part of NMOS. Firstly, that intimate grain metadata can be mapped to different transport types, whether that's RTP or something else. Secondly, it's important that identity and timing data persist from the point of capture all the way through the NMOS chain, from processing to playout. Finally, that the NMOS timing system, which is based on timestamping grains at the point of their creation, carrying that timestamp through the system and synchronising grains only when they are required to be so, enables us to maintain lip sync and identify latency even through a large processing chain. The first transport type being used alongside these specifications is RTP. RTP provides header extensions which allow means to carry additional data alongside an RTP session without changing how the payload is structured. Definitions of RTP payloads are provided by existing standards, such as RFC 4175 and 3190 for raw video and audio respectively. Additionally, by using these header extensions, we are able to maintain compatibility with existing industry specifications such as TR03 and AS67. As discussed in an earlier screencast, a grain carries with it a number of identifiers and timestamps. These are a source ID, identifying the source it came from, a flow ID indicating the flow it is part of, and two timestamps, the synchronization and origin timestamp. In order to persist this identity and timing data between devices, the source and flow ID and the two timestamps are mapped into RTP header extensions. Carrying grain identity and full resolution timestamps via transports, whether RTP or otherwise, ensures we can maintain relationships between them. For example, for lip sync between flows, no matter what the processing chain is they pass through and however many devices that consists of. As discussed in previous screencasts, nodes which expose senders must provide details of how to connect to them. In the case of RTP, the standard mechanism to do this is using SDP. These files provide a standard means of identifying how an RTP stream should be interpreted. So for example, mapping between an RFC defined payload and the dynamic payload type which is contained within the RTP stream. In a similar way, header extensions and their mapping to the IDs in the RTP stream are also contained within this file. Finally, this file also identifies how the RTP timestamp relates to a reference clock as used in TR03 and AES67. At the moment in NMOS, we're working with RFC 4175 and 3190 for simplicity, and we're using RTP. However, it's important to note that senders and receivers in the data model can support any transport type and in cases other than RTP with these payloads, a standard means for carrying the grain metadata, that's the timing and identity information, should be defined. Thanks for watching. If you want to find out more about the specifications that we've talked about in this screencast, you can go to the Amwork TV GitHub. Alternatively, members of the Amwork Networked Media Incubator project can find more detail on the Amwork.tv project page and also on resources held by the project. Finally, for information on the JTNM reference architecture, go to jt-nm.org.